Today I talk to Tom Monte about his approach on healing, how he believes a proper diet can overcome cancers, incurable heart diseases and many other serious illnesses. Hi Tom, welcome uh, to our studio. Hi Kevin, thank you so much for having me. Today's topic is about healing. Can you explain how that works? The first thing to realize is that you have 100 trillion cells in your body. That's way more cells than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Something, though, every one of those cells is doing things right now that are marvel. They were, they're so amazing that nothing you could comprehend because there's little tiny proteins traveling in your cells that are called kinases, making decisions to turn on this gene or that gene. Something is running your body that is an awesome intelligence. That awesome intelligence can overcome, cure anything. In fact, you're healing your body right at this very instant. That mm. intelligence is causing your body to run with absolute efficiency, and it will do it for the entire time you're alive if it's allowed to. The problem is we get in the way. We, we all block the intelligence from healing us at every single instant. Every one of us manifests uh, a cancer cells or, or, or has some budding heart disease or some kind of illness that we have a genetic weakness for. But the intelligence overrides it and tells genes to shut down, to tell us other genes to turn on. It's constantly changing the conditions within you so you have health, clarity, you have mental, emotional stability and so forth. The problem is our, the problem is our behavior. We don't live in alignment with the intelligence that's running our bodies. Now, if you could imagine that, first of all, no one can imagine 100 trillion cells, and no one can imagine that every one of those cells is doing something of awesome decision-making that's affecting your health at this moment. But the intelligence that runs every one of those cells not only can imagine it, it does it. And so what we have to think is, how do we live in alignment with that intelligence? How do we come back into harmony with it so that it can do what it wants to do, which is to create health in us? And the way we do it is to live on a, a essentially a plant-based diet. We are active physically every single day. We, we try to think in ways that are in harmony with the intelligence, which in essence is love, not the kind of thing, not the sentimental um, uh, definition of love that most of us have. It's a kind of love that actually nourishes everything. First of all, gives your attention to anything that you are uh, focused on, that gives you the intention entirely so that all your awesome attention and your power comes to that thing that you're focused on. And then you give it energy that nourishes and grows it. You give it energy that nourishes and grows it. That's my definition of love, the, mm -hmm. the energy that nourishes and supports life. And so if we live in alignment with this intelligence, we are eating certain kinds of foods, essentially a plant-based with, with small amounts of animal food. Why plant-based? Yes, because what happens is plants, we've evolved, human, the human body has evolved eating plants. That was the primary food that we could count on for the calories that to survive, or, or to survive in, in, in pre-civilized times and throughout civilization. Agriculture is essentially plant-based. Plants are biochemically synergistic with us, meaning they, they change the way your genes function for the better. If you eat broccoli, for example, it changes about 120 genes that are related to cancer, whether cancer triggers in your body, whether cancer doesn't trigger. Broccoli is one of the many plant foods, all the cruciferous vegetables, kale, collard, mustard greens, arugula, bok choy, all the, all the cruciferous vegetables, Brussels sprouts, they all turn on genes that promote health. Uh, green and leafy vegetables, all the round and sweet vegetables, they all change the way your body functions to maximize your health. So they act synergistically on a genetic level, on a cellular level, on an organ level. They, they cause the body to function better. So plants rich in fiber, rich in phytochemicals that do all kinds of uh, things that activate detoxifying functions in the cells, that change the way your body works for the better. That's not true of animal foods beyond a certain amount. It's very hard to fully masticate. That is to bite, chew through a piece mm -hmm. of steak. You swallow it as a little white wad. 
And if your teeth can't deal with it, your intestines can't either. And so what happens is too much animal fat, too much animal protein block circulation in the system. One of the things that the intelligence wants us to do to create harmony and health in the body is to circulate well. That is to say, circulate blood, that every single cell needs blood and oxygen immune cells. It needs to circulate lymph. The lymph is the uh, gathering waste from all the tissues and taking it out of your body through the liver, then through the uh, urination and feces. And also electromagnetic energy. Your body is an electrical unit. And it has to maximize electricity in order to heal. The more energy you have, the more vitality you experience, the electricity is flowing uh, optimally. The Chinese knew this 5,000 years ago when they created acupuncture. So when you have maximum circulation, you have maximum circulation of blood, lymph, and ki, or electromagnetic energy. And then you have plants which are rich in nutrition that support your health and your healing. You're starting to live more in alignment with with the intelligence that's flowing within you, that's running your entire organism. And you're starting to create the, a harmony with that that creates harmony in you. Once that starts to happen, you start to feel more positive about your life. Your, your brain functions much more optimally. Brain chemistry starts to balance. Serotonin levels go up. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter mm -hmm. that creates a sense of well-being, creates a sense of um, optimism and also confidence. As serotonin levels go up, your concentration gets better, your focus gets better, your optimism about life gets better. What happens then? You have great vitality, you have great clarity, you are also optimistic. Then we start to really problem solve in the world. Then we start to see, okay, we have this problem, we have that problem, let's deal with it. We don't shirk from it, we don't feel negative, we don't feel too weak for it, we don't get easily defeated by it. If you look at, at, at diseases, eh? I can imagine yeah. by living a life like this, you um, decrease the risk of, of becoming ill. Um, right. Can you also cure disease, diseases by living this way? Yes, absolutely. If, if you were to study the causes of all, of all the major illnesses, like, for example, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all the major illnesses that we suffer from today that are actually epidemic in the world today and are, and are, are exploding beyond our capacity to actually deal effectively with them. If you look at the major illnesses, there are three primary causes underlying. There, each of those illnesses that I just mentioned, cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, high blood pressure, all these major illnesses are basically manifestations of the same underlying conditions, which are basically poisoning. We are poisoning ourselves with our food, with the atmosphere, with the, with the, with the toxins in the food, um, pesticides, herbicides, and so forth, with the high fat diet. We're basically poisoning ourselves, and that poisoning manifests in three different conditions. The first is high inflammation. Inflammation is the immune reaction to excessive poisons in the system. The body has an immune reaction, we get inflamed, we get hot, it's a, it's a high, it's the basis for um, a wide range of illnesses. All the major illnesses are basically inflammatory diseases. Arthritis, asthma, they're all inflammatory, uh, cancer, heart disease. They're basically the, the consequence of the immune system overreacting to poisons that are in the system. Whenever your immune system recognizes that there's toxins in your system, it goes on into battle. And whenever something goes into battle, including the immune system, there's going to be collateral damage, meaning certain healthy cells are going to get damaged by the, the attack on the unhealthy cells. When cells are attacked by the immune system, what they're attacked by are a variety of immune agents. But one of the things is oxidants, free radicals, oxidants that change your DNA and can trigger mutation. And that mutation can among, be, among other things, cancer. It's the same with heart disease and all the rest. Inflammation is the foundation for many of the illnesses that we suffer from today. The second thing is high insulin. Whenever you eat a processed food, sugar, um, white flour products, your glucose levels, your blood sugar levels go in, up instantly. The minute you put a chocolate piece of chocolate into your t mouth, in your tongue, the sugar goes into your bloodstream via your tongue. You don't need to digest it. It's not necessary to digest it. The sugar goes in immediately and the, your, your blood sugar levels skyrocket instantaneously. They go up. 
That means instantaneously you also have to have insulin because insulin allows sugar to go into cells. High insulin is a big problem in the world today. People don't talk about it enough, but it's the reason we're getting Alzheimer's, the reason we're getting all these cancers and heart disease. When insulin is basically allowing blood sugar to enter the cell through these gateways on cells, but it also is a, a storage hormone. It tells it if, if you can't get it all in the cell because your cells are little factories that don't need any more fuel, don't give me more fuel. If it can't get into the cells, the insulin will say, store it as fat. And once you start storing excess calories as fat, we start to balloon. Mm -hmm. And in the US, US greater than 60% are overweight and, 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 and a great percentage of Americans are obese, as anybody, as everybody in the world knows. And that's the trend for the whole world. Fat cells, we think of fat cells as sort of like padding, like a mattress, but if they're not like that. Fat cells are very active tissue and they produce so many poisons. They produce all kinds of inflammatory compounds that actually basically poison your body. Fat cells, as they become too big, they become highly, they become big factories for poisons in the body. So when we have high insulin, high inflammation, we have high weight, we're basically poisoning our bodies every single moment of our life. Now the intelligence within us is trying to fight that, trying to keep us from, from keep us healthy. So it's a struggle. If we reduce inflammation mm -hmm. and we reduce insulin, and we reduce weight, all those three come down, guess what happens? First of all, the odd thing is, the fat cells no longer produce poisons, they produce a chemical called adiponectin, that is a, this amazing healer within your body that goes into your tissues and it tells cancer cells to shut down, it's called apoptosis, it, tell, it triggers programmed cell death. Scientists have wanting to know how to do that to treat cancer for decades. The, the chemical in the body does this, a, 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 adiponectin does this, it triggers apoptosis. It tells cancer cells to shut down. If you start to lose weight, your body right away goes into healing. Also, you're coming more into harmony with that intelligence. And inflammation dies down, means your immune system cools off. Now your immune system can focus on the problem, mm -hmm. cancer, heart disease, whatever it is. It doesn't have to deal with all the poisons that your body's producing every moment. Yeah. And then you lose, and then and then your insulin levels drop. Insulin is what is called a mitogen. It tells cells to grow, spread out. Cancer needs insulin, high insulin. It needs high glucose because it's reproducing so fast. It needs fuel. When glucose levels fall, when insulin levels fall, cancer doesn't have the fuel. So and also in low insulin levels, apoptosis starts to happen, cancer cells start to die. Your cells actually work in neighborhoods, and if they recognize, if the neighborhood recognizes that some of your cells are starting to grow out of control, they start to send signals to them, shut down, stop, either initiate program cell death or come back to normal, one or the other. You're going to have to get healthy, you're going to have to commit sepaku. But whatever it does, you're going to tell, once cancer comes in, it shuts everything down, it shuts those communications down. Once the body restores these basic healthy conditions, low inflammation, low insulin, lower weight, what happens is the information from the intelligence within us and the entire system starts to function in ways that it can overcome everything, anything. Any illness can be overcome if we start to create the conditions where the body can listen again to that intelligence that it's running itself. Now here's the thing, Yes, it's true. Some, some illnesses go so far that they get beyond our capacity to control them. We, yeah. Our basic vitality has been compromised. But if that hasn't happened as yet, then we can recover. The body can recover itself. It's doing it every single day for every one of us, and it can do it. Okay, Tom. Thank you very much for sharing uh, those insights. It was very interesting uh, to listen to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kevin. Pleasure to talk to you. And you at home, thank you for watching our show. I hope to see you next week.